Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to talk about the board's role in human capital management. And joining me to have this discussion is Daphne E. Jones, who's a board member with AMN Healthcare, Bar also the Barnes Group, and also sits on the board of Masonite International Corp and is a respected author. So welcome, Daphne. Thank you so much, TK. It's great to be here and hello to everyone as well. So before we start um, and address the issue at hand, which is human capital management, um, can you summarize for our audience uh, the key message in your latest book called Win When They Say That You Won't? Great, I'd be happy to. I, first, let me talk about why I wrote it. Um, I wrote the book to help those people who were undervalued, felt overlooked in their careers and or their positions and wanted to just level up. You know, I was told and shown by behaviors of others basically all my life until I was an SVP uh, and retired um, that I wouldn't win. And I wanted to share with others how I did it so they can feel inspired and empowered and excited to do it as well. The key message in the book is that you need to have the right will set, the mindset, tool set that'll enable you to have a sustainable skill set to enable continuous improvement. It's all about continuous improvement. And in that framework, I have a four part framework that resembles TK, what programmers use to develop or improve apps so we can continuously improve ourselves, just like apps are continuously improved. So if apps like iOS can grow from version one to version 16, where it is today, why can't we grow from version one of ourselves to version X? I'm personally on version 5.5 of my life. And so that's what it's all about. How do you level up? How do you grow continuously? And how do you win when people are telling you that you won't? Well, that's interesting, and it'll be a good segue into our discussion, but I can't help but think that I must, at my age, I must be on version <laughs> maybe like 84 or something <laughs> like that. So. Yeah, and, and versions have been known to happen many in one year, so you don't have to be 84 years old to be on your 84th version. Yeah, so, well, that's uh, good. It, it's all uh, about improving yourself, and no matter how small or how large the version is, it's one that is moving forward and upward. Yeah, well, that's a good message. So let me talk about the issue at hand, which is human capital management, which we both know is really uh, an up and coming issue in the boardroom and something that everybody in the old days said they paid attention to, but you know, certainly the experience was that they didn't do enough about it. So my question to you is what should the board be doing to ensure progress is being made and management has bought into human capital management and all the benefits of that? And I think that's a, a terrific question. And, and as I talk about in my book, winning, you know, begins in the mind, you know, winning is realized at the end of a journey, but it's conceived first in the mind. And so the board needs to really review what they believe, what they think and, and what they value about human capital management. Is it a business issue? Is it a social issue? Is it a fairness issue? And you know, when, when you focus on human capital, management will focus on that help customer engagement or net promoter scores. Do they believe that focusing on talent will, will improve supply chain or the cost of poor quality or cash flow metrics? If they believe that, which I believe it's a business issue, it's a competitive issue, it's how you win in the market is by having great people who are engaged, focused and not quietly quitting. What do they believe about it? You know, oftentimes TK, DEI is all lumped together, right? And what does the board actually believe about diversity in itself? What does the board then believe about equity? in itself. And what does it believe about inclusion? Because you may have a diverse company, but that diverse company may not be equitable or may not be inclusive. And so having a point of view where the board can align on what do we think about as relates to differences in people, or does everyone have access in our company to the same opportunities? And do we want them to? 
right? And, and inclusion, you know, do our people feel welcome and included? So the board has to think about that and agree on it. And it has to align with the values of the company and there's practices and then there's policies. And so there's something that I have shared with my CEOs, uh, especially after the death of George Floyd. And I said, you know, we got to think about our practices and policies in the areas of what I'll call the five P's. There's the pay, you know, and again, a policy may say this is how we're going to do things but a practice is, do we actually do it? And so those two need to be aligned. So our pay practices, do we pay people the same rate for the same experiences and the same type of performance? Is that our policy and is that our practice? That's one P. From a hiring policy, do we look at our policies and make sure there's no disadvantageous policies that will preclude one group of people being able to be employed at our, at our company? So that's a second P, policies around hiring. Procurement, do we provide opportunities for minority and women and, and other kinds of uh, undervalued and underused organizations to be who we buy our services and goods from. Philanthropically, right? Our, our, our policies and practices to the point where we are providing funding and support and help to countries or organizations and colleges that wherein people may be disadvantaged. And so if you actually have a board that believes it's a business issue, who understands the differences and uh, supports the differences of D and E and I, then their role is to be able to go and talk to the management team and begin to measure what is our policy? How is our pipeline? Do we have people that are coming behind the current CEO that, and there's enough of them that have a PL background? And if they don't, are we developing those leaders to have a PL background so that when it's time for us to find a diverse CEO, we don't have to go outside, we can look within our own coffers. And so having those measures in place and incentives in place of the leadership team, I believe is really important so that they can get aligned with the board's value as well. It's not hopeless. And we as a board, we're not helpless. There are things that we can do. So I've always uh, said that, um, you know, building um, a human capital management into the culture is important. And the CEO is probably the most important person, yeah. but the board can certainly play a huge factor in influencing what the culture is by its relationship and its interaction with the CEO. So, you know, it echoes everything that you just discussed, you know, in that sense. And uh, certainly the board can play a role, but I've, I've got a challenging question for you. Mm. So what, what does someone do as an individual director? Okay. Let's say you might have just joined the board or maybe you've been there for a while, but you see that you're that some of your fellow board members are not buying in to some of these changes or are very slow at the switch. How can you as an individual director sort of go about flipping that script and making sure that the board members sort of get where the world is going? Yeah, it's great. Great question. Um, and, and there are certain partnerships that board members form. First, we form a board member relationship with each other, other board members. And then of course, we have a relationship with our management team and then our shareholders. And so it's important for the board to be able to talk to itself, but there are some things that are meant for a full board conversation. And then there's some things that are probably meant for a sidebar conversation. So as a new board member or an existing board member, regardless, I would want to take that board member to the side and just have a conversation with them and understand where they might be coming from and see if there is some common ground that, that we can help and, and we can find. I remember that after the murder of George Floyd, I actually went to uh, my compensation committee chair and we were just talking about the five Ps and, and the things that 
uh, to see where his mind was coming from or where he was with what can we do as a board to help galvanize the expectations of the management team. And I shared with him my personal experiences and sometimes telling stories really helps people to understand your point of view. Um, and when I did that, and then I shared with him some statistics as well, I mean, he started crying. It, it, it affected him so much. And after that conversation and he hung up, and it doesn't mean that you have to make your board member cry. I'm not trying to say that, um, but sometimes it, they, don't, they don't see it from the vantage point that they may be able to see it from. And my being able to do that with the board member allowed him to say, we can have higher expectations of our management team and we can do more with our marginalized people than we currently had. And so he then wanted to put things in place to get us and our people you know, into a better place. And so I think having a conversation is also helpful. Um, talking to the chairman and the chair lady of the board, I think can also do something where you wanna know that you're not by yourself in your point of view and your observations, but you are seeing that, oh, your chair kind of feels the same way. And then sometimes things just sort of happen, depending on how serious the disconnect is. Sometimes the board member leaves, but, uh, but hopefully there's a conversation that can happen between two like-minded uh, board members. Well, uh, Daphne, this is certainly an important topic. It's one that investors and employees care about a great deal. And I think we're going to see a lot more attention paid to this uh, going forward. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to, to let our audience know um, your book sounds certainly interesting. Where can people get a copy of the book? Well, in addition to Amazon.com, they can find it on my personal website, Daphne E. Jones. That's D A P H N E E jones.com and then forward slash book now if they want they can also get a free intro to the book and that's by going on daphne e jones.com forward slash free dash intro well i wish you luck with that and i wish you luck on the boards that you sit on and i want to thank you for taking the time on joining us today it's my indeed pleasure thank you and be well Yep. And that will conclude this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.